Now I got the back of the Subaru opened up. Got some stuff this morning, went out on a trash run. Got a few more things. There's a couple other things in the shop, so I'm gonna pull everything out, give you guys a uh, good showing of it. Not really have much for this haul for March and April or February. I can't even remember when I picked some of this stuff up last, but I'm gonna get it all unloaded and lined up and then I'll show you guys what I found. So these overlays are magnetic. They're fairly easy to remove. Amazingly, this thing still works. I can't really see it too well because we're outside. Should have just done it on the workbench, but oh well. So it's starting up right now. It, uh, I had just turned it on a minute ago. It went through this whole process and then the screen went black. I wasn't watching it though, so I don't know. Maybe it just didn't like that there's not a keyboard connected to it. I have no idea. But we're just gonna see if it uh, turns on or not. Yeah, so it got about three quarters of the way and then it just shut off. So I don't know what's going on with that. We'll just leave it how it is though. I didn't try and reset it just now or anything. So we'll see if it comes back or does something. But if not, I'll have to take it back to the house to mess with it. So we'll start with these uh, two monitors here. Both of them don't work. I didn't know that, of course, because I don't have a uh, way to run power to them at the curb. But both of them are non-working. One of them has a crack. The other one, I think, was hit with something. So it's just, you know, colored lines on this one. And then this one, the crack goes like kind of like that. So unfortunately, those are both uh, no good. They'll go back to the curb. I picked up this um, only because it was with this other red machine over here. I didn't really realize it uh, until I had already put it in the back of the car, but it's pretty significantly, da significantly damaged. But the cord on it's still good, so I'll just take that off and scrap the rest of it. It looks like it's one of those twin brush uh, floor scrubbers. So that'll be scrapped, no big deal. This box fan still works, no issues with it. Don't know why they threw it away. So I'll probably take that to work with me. And then these two vacuums I found. I did find another one, but I've already scrapped it and did a video on it. Uh, that link is in the description. But so these Kenmore uh, upright progressive vacuums, I almost never pick these up simply because for some reason they're always in a very bad condition. I don't know why. But for some reason, almost every single one of these that I've found has just not been worth fixing. This one is in really good condition, and I didn't even check the uh, bag. I wouldn't be running a paper bag in it, but I'm pretty sure these can take Panasonic bags if I remember correctly. But no idea what's wrong with it. Probably just has a clog. So we'll uh, mess with that for a video. This shark vacuum works. It just has a clog. Typical spot, it's uh, the air filter that's at the bottom of the dust cup. Just simply doesn't look like it's ever been serviced. Overall, the vacuum's in really good condition. So probably do a video on that. And then these two lawnmowers, these were actually given to me, but I figured I'd throw them in here. This, uh, both of them have compression, both of them ran at one point they probably have dirty carburetors need fresh gas and a uh, simple tune-up done and they should be good to go this one if i don't have a bag for it i'm probably gonna order a new bag off the internet if i can find one cheap enough but this one will be a good flip and i'll probably end up keeping this honda because it's in really good condition i don't know what year this machine is HRR 2166 VKA. I'd have to look up the serial number if I can even do that. But uh, overall, it's in good shape. It does need a little bit of work. It's got the typical uh, uh, drive handle cracking going on. I don't think these are all that expensive, so I'll probably just replace that. Uh, the cables seem to work fine, so no issues there. But this one probably just needs a carburetor cleaning. Looks like the tank is uh, 
pretty worn, sun damaged it looks like. So I've got plenty of those tanks on hand if that one's leaking. But overall, I'd say they're both uh, pretty solid machines. I also found some other stuff, a couple tools for that shark. Uh, these Nintendo Powers, which these may be worth something to collectors. I don't know. Uh, I remember seeing and reading these when I was a kid. And uh, I think these are like early... Where's the year on it? 1995. Yeah, so these are... Uh, I think there's some 94 ones in here too. So those uh, might be worth something to somebody. I don't know uh, how much they're worth offhand, but figured they'd be worth a shot to have a look at on eBay. I also found one of these. I normally don't pick these up either, but I figured if this thing works, I could actually use it uh, with my computer. So I want to make sure it works. I don't know if it does. If it doesn't, it's just going to go back into the trash. I'm not even sweating it. So I forgot, I also found another full rainbow uh, SE vacuum. That video is gonna play right here. All right, so this is a Trash Find Rainbow SE. As far as all the attachments and accessories go, I have found uh, everything that it came with. It did come with the instruction manual for the Aquamate, which I was not provided with, unfortunately but I was provided with the normal extension wand. So I have no idea if this thing works or not. And then I also found today two more rainbow vacuums. This one's an E-Series and this one's another SE. Let's get them out of the car and see what kind of shape that they're in. So here they are, E-Series and SE. I have both the suction only ho hoses and wands for both machines, as well as both power nozzles. The SE has the updated one for the SE. And the E-Series has a one that's a little bit better. The uh, brush rolls are in pretty good shape, just need to be cleaned up some. This one is uh, in really good shape too. Here's the SE, it's got all the tools with it. It seems to be in good condition, but I'm not sure uh, if there's anything wrong with it or not. The E-Series is a little bit rougher, so I'm gonna have to give both of these a thorough cleaning. The good thing is they're waterproof, so I can just spray them off with a hose and let them dry. But let's turn this one on. <laughs> Sounds good. Well, mostly anyways. Oh, and in case if you guys were wondering if that Mac actually was salvageable. Sure looks like it. I do have to get a new panel for the front there. All that is is just a magnetic screen overlay. I was able to find some on Amazon for $40, so probably just going to pick one up and throw it on. That's all this thing needs. Now, I had picked up one of these machines probably about a year, maybe two years ago. Maybe it was last summer. I honestly can't remember. But I want to say it was the same one, if not the same model, newer or older. But the screen overlay for that one would have worked on this one. I hate it when I've found stuff in the trash, gotten rid of it, and then, you know, a year or so later find another one that that one had parts on it that I could have put on what I just picked up. That's neither there nor here. Here's the specs. It's got a 500 gigabyte hard drive. Probably can take up to eight gigs of RAM. So two and two are installed. It is very noticeable that there's only four gigs of RAM installed right now, but I'm also, 
in the process of installing High Sierra, which is the most recent uh, OS 10 that will work on this machine. So it's got Sierra on it right now. So this is it, there's no more upgrades after this one. But anyways, yeah, I'm glad it works. Definitely a lucky find, I guess, even though these are only going for about 200, 250 bucks on eBay right now in perfect working condition. But it's still pretty cool to find something like this. So I found some more stuff. One of them being this Bissell bagged vacuum, which needs the uh, dishwasher treatment. Power lifter bagged pet. I was kind of happy to find this one. So we'll have a video on that. I also found an electric leaf blower. I don't know if it works or not. If not, it's scrap, it's no big deal. I found, I don't think there's anything wrong with this, the Klein uh, wire chaser. Yeah, I haven't even really messed with this, but I'll probably give this to the dad. He always uses these for his stuff. I found a Craftsman drill, and I'm not sure if this is lithium or NICAD. I want to say it's NICAD. Yeah, nickel cadmium. So, not the best battery technology, but maybe this thing works, maybe not. Who knows? I just picked it up because it was there. And then I found a uh, Crackhead Special. A garbage bag full of wiring and conduit. So I didn't really paw around in here to see what else was buried. And it looks like there's some other stuff. So I haven't, like I said, I haven't looked through here. But it looks like there is some other stuff that's in here including the uh, manual for that drill. But no clue. There actually might be some uh, other stuff here, too. And then to finish off the last part of this video, I found another one, another iMac. I, I just, I don't get it. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with it, if there's even anything wrong with it. Um, it did sprinkle a little bit today, so it is a little wet. But that's no matter. You can just let it dry off. Man, these things are heavy. 27-inch iMac. And there was two empty iMac boxes. So one of them, I believe, was from this one. And then the other one, they replaced it for whatever reason. Let me get the model number off the back of this thing, and I'll run the serial and see what we can find. So there is a couple more things that I picked up, but I'll pull out the black trash bag and go through that. Let you guys know if anything of interest is in there as well as some of this other stuff. So I just got back and unhitched. Sorry about the wind. I know it's picked up, but figured I'd throw this stuff in at the end of this video. Picked all four of these up from the same guy. Edger has compression, mower's got compression. Apparently they were running at one point, much like everything is, of course. This uh, green Craftsman appears to be, out of these two riders, the one that's probably the more saveable. If it didn't fall, I noticed that so there's the carb. He had the carb out of it. But this is a single cylinder Kohler. Good engines. Definitely a good engine. Um, relatively easy to work on too. The old uh, LT4000 that I had at one point had one of these in it and it was a pretty good little engine. So pretty sure I could probably get this one going. Needs a battery of course and a good service. Might do the, uh, the old aerosol and lighter trick to reseat this bead. 
but this one this one i think is just too far gone the uh, rear axle is all locked up it's in neutral i tried all the gears just because um, the uh, the brakes aren't locked up at least i don't think they are but uh yeah this one i think is uh too far gone and I can't tell offhand if this is a Tecumseh. It's a 1998. I'm almost positive this is a Tecumseh. But there's that. So this one, both of these were a huge pain to get onto the back of the trailer. But you can see he's, uh, he had a jerry rigged a bit, but that's all right. So there probably is some good stuff on here. Maybe not this one, but this one for sure. Anyways, hope to have some more videos on this stuff. At least two or three videos, maybe. The Edger will probably be the easiest one to fix and get going. Just probably needs a new gasket, typical for these.